created a probe section. So I'm going to show you how you can add stuff to a printer. So say you had a printer, uh, you had a traditional clicky switch Z end stop and you've gone ahead, you bought a probe, a BL touch, inductive probe, how, whatever. In our case here, we're using an inductive probe. And now you want to add a bed probe as well. You want to add a bed mesh. How do we go about doing that? Well, we're going to go to the config reference section and we're going to look up probe. And there is a whole section here about adding a probe. There's quite a bit here. And you may not need to add everything depending on what feature you are adding. So let's go ahead and add an example probe config to our printer. So I'm going to add the probe section here. And this is just the default probe configuration that I set up earlier. So here we go. We have our probe section and I've added it underneath my Z stepper motor just to keep things organized because they kind of go together. And as you can see here, we have pin GPIO 25, which Again, I plug my probe into my Z end stop position, which is IO 25. Our X, Y, and Z offsets, this is referencing the position of the probe in regard to the nozzle. So if your probe happened to be the nozzle itself, you would leave these as zero. If your probe was behind the nozzle, it would be a positive value in the Y axis. If it was to the left of the nozzle, which in my case it is, maybe it's 25 millimeters to the left. If it was 25 millimeters to the right of the nozzle, it would be a positive value. So depending on which tool head you're using, you're going to have to adjust this accordingly. So samples and sample result, basically this is telling it how many times it's going to probe and what value it's going to use. So it's going to use the median of three probe results as its final value. The sample retract distance is how high it's going to come up after each probing result. And your tolerances, this is how accurate of a probe you're looking for and your retry. What this means is it's going to be looking for a tolerance of one value and it's going to give me three chances to get that. If it does not reach that tolerance, within that many probe attempts, it'll error out. So depending on what kind of accuracy you want and what type of probe, you may not get um, a super accurate probe result. So say you only want to get within 0.05 millimeters, you can adjust those values. Now, anytime I am homing my printer with something mounted on the tool head as my Z end stop, you wanna home it in a safe position. So in my case here, we're gonna add a safe Z home section. And I've already pre-made one here, and this is going to home it at the XY position of 9090. It's a 180 by 180 bed, so it's going to move to the middle of the bed and do the Z home. This is the speed it's going to do, the movement, and the Z hop. What this does is now when I go to do a homing routine, the first thing that's going to happen is my Z is going to move up five millimeters before it homes XY. This is good to have because if you happen to home your printer and your Z is at zero, you don't want your nozzle dragging across the bed. So this one's going to move it up a little bit just to give us a little bit of breathing room. So that should be okay for now. So let's save and restart and see if everything is good or if we're still getting errors. So at this point, we're not throwing any major errors anymore. We have some temperatures. So we're okay to move on to the next step. Now, as you can see right here, uh, we're getting these yellow warning here. Now, again, I am running mainsail. The steps may be a little bit different here for fluid and octoprint, depending on when you are watching this video and what interface you are using. So you might get different errors. Or you might not even see these at this point, but as you can see here, it's calling out that we're missing some additional information. Now with mainsail, it has a separate file here called mainsail config. Okay. So we need to add this to our printer config. So this is one of the nice things with Clipper is you can have different config files and they can reference each other. So there's all this information here. Now you could go and copy all of this and paste it in your printer.cfg file. However, that's a little bit of a brute force method. So what we're going to do is just add a line here to our printer.cfg and we'll add it under the printer section just to keep things organized. And it's called include space mainsail.cfg in square brackets. And what that does is after a save and reset, everything that would be in that mainsail.cfg file is read along with that printer.cfg file. So that's one of the nice things is you can keep things organized by different files. So if you wanted to say create a separate config file just for macros, I could create a file called macros.cfg, create it, and then in my printer dot cfg file add another line called include macros dot cfg while you can have one monolithic printer dot cfg file with everything in it breaking it out into separate configuration files could just keep things a little bit cleaner and a little less headache inducing when searching for something so we're ready to print right well no we need to check some things we're running a completely default configuration for this printer right now um yes i wired it up matching the pin diagram but are things even gonna move in the right direction when I tell it to home? So it's best to check some things first. Now, I know this isn't a Voron, obviously. However, the Voron Design website 
has a whole section in the documentation going over things that you should check on your initial setup, such as ensuring that your heaters are working, stepper motor checking, and this is going to be the stepper motor buzz that I talked about earlier. So what you're going to do to ensure that your stepper motors are moving in the right direction is you're going to run a stepper buzz. So for example, here, we're going to do the stepper buzz on stepper motor X, and this is our gantry. So when we run this, the stepper buzz works by moving it in the positive direction and then in the negative direction repeatedly several times. So when we run this, if everything is right, we should see this move to the right and then move to the left. So let's run it and see what happens. So as you can see, it's moving to the left and then the right. So that means our motor is going backwards. Now you can fix this in one of two ways. Uh, the complicated way is you rewire the stepper motor in the opposite direction, or we go into our printer.cfg and for our X stepper, since it already has an exclamation mark, we're gonna remove the exclamation mark in the direction pin. This is gonna reverse the direction of the motor. If you didn't have an exclamation mark and you need to reverse the direction, you add an exclamation mark. Do a save and restart, and then test it again. And there we go. Now we're moving in the correct direction. Now go ahead and do this with your Y and your Z steppers as well. Now, again, if you're running a system with multiple motors on the same axis, so for example, a Voron uh, V2 has four stepper motors for Z, you're gonna run stepper Z, then stepper Z1, Z2, Z3. You don't need to call out stepper Z0. So I've gone ahead, I've ensured that my X, Y, and Z steppers are moving in the correct direction. Uh, when it comes to your stepper motor for your extruder, when you go to calibrate your E-steps, when you first go to feed filament into the extruder for the first time, if it's feeding in, you've got it set up correctly. If it decides to back the filament out, you're going to have to change the direction of your extruder motor at that point. Same thing, just add an exclamation or remove an exclamation point for the direction pin for the extruder. Now, another thing you may need to add to your config if it's not there or adjust is the direction of travel for homing. So for example, on my X axis, um, I want it to home to the positive. So I want it to home to max, okay? You need to add a line if it's not already there called homing position direction. And if it's true, it's gonna home in the positive direction. If it's false, it's gonna home in the negative direction. Now on my machine here, I'm running sensorless homing. So on my X axis, I want it to home to the minimum. So I'm gonna have a value of false for my X axis. And with my Y axis, I'm gonna want it to home in the opposite direction. I want to home to maximum. Now, as you can see here, um, I've gone and adjusted these values, but now I'm getting an error. Uh, invalid homing position, direction, position, end stop in stepper Y. So let's go check that out. So stepper Y, I want it homing uh, to positive. Oh, but look at this. I forgot my position end stop. So we're going to just change that to 180 for now. So this is what I mean by clippers kind of smart, where if you don't have something set up correctly in your configuration, it'll call it out. So let's save and restart and we're good to go. So we have our positions for our end stop set up. We know our motors are moving in the right direction. Before we actually run it for a home, you're going to want to ensure that your end stops are actually working. Now there's a command, as you can see, for checking your end stops, uh, but in mainsail, there is a button in the machine setting that will check them. But for our Z, we have a probe and it's an inductive probe. So right now it is showing as open. You put something metal under it and it is triggered. So that is set up correctly. Now, if you need to reverse this, uh, because it is triggering when it shouldn't or vice versa, you would go into your printer.cfg and the pin for your end stop or probe, you would just add or remove an exclamation point. Now, something you may need to be aware of depending on your controller is you may need an input pin called out for pull up or a pull down resistor to be enabled or disabled. And this is done by adding either a, uh, what is that called anyways? Huh, it's called a carrot, a carrot or a tilde uh, in front of the pin. So now I believe we're at the point where we can test homing this printer and make sure that everything is moving. So let's go ahead and do that and cross our fingers and hold our hand over the e-stop. And we're good. So now our machine is moving. 
There's one last thing we need to add though, and we have a nice fancy inductive probe on here. Let's add a bed mesh. Now, if we go again to the config reference page, which you're gonna be referring to often, as I said at the beginning, uh, there's a whole section on adding a bed mesh to a printer. Now, the section here for bed mesh, there's quite a bit here. So a trick you can do is if you wanna add a feature to your printer that already exists on another printer, just copy and paste it out of the config from another printer and adjust it accordingly. So, hey, look at this, the Voron Switchwire Clipper config has a whole section on bed mesh. So we're just gonna borrow that and add it to our printer and adjust it accordingly. So we'll just add it here under the probe section. Probe and bed mesh seem to go together. And we're just gonna adjust these values so that they mesh with our printer specifically. So for our mesh minimum, um, depending on the offsets for your inductive probe on your tool head, you may need to adjust these. And your mesh max uh, will be the maximum boundary. So mesh minimum is zero, zero in our case, and mesh max would be 180, 180 after taking into account your inductive pro positions. So we'll adjust that to 150, 150 for now. And then if we need to tweak it later, we can. Probe count, this is the size of the grid. So we're doing a six by six grid. Uh, that might be a little too much for a bed of this size. So we'll just, we'll just go four by four for now. Uh, by cubic algorithm, we can leave, leave that. Fade start and fade end. Uh, the way a bed mesh works is it's going to adjust your Z offset on the fly to take into account um, any hills and valleys in the bed. So at one millimeter of height to 10 millimeters height, it's gradually gonna fade that compensation down to zero. So at 10 millimeters, it won't be running any bed mesh anymore. Again, there are more settings that you can adjust, uh, but copy and pasting a config that you know works from another printer to kind of get you started is a good way to kind of speed up setting up a configuration quickly. So now at this point, our configuration is mostly set up. We may still need to adjust some values like end stop position or offsets for the probe to the nozzle location, uh, but you're pretty much ready to move on to your initial printer setup at this point. Do things like PID tuning, and calibrating e-steps for your extruder. So that's about it for this part in the video series. Of course, I will be doing a part three and it will be based off questions that you guys ask in the comments below so firstly make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that and if you do have any questions make sure you ask them there and while you're down there make sure you like that smash button if you want to help support the content i create and the things i do i have links in the description as well i hope you learned something new today and as always have yourselves a great day cheers